thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to talk about the case of Shonda Vander Ark. Shonda and her 19-year-old son, Paul Ferguson, ended up spending six months torturing Shonda's second to youngest child, Timothy Ferguson. He was autistic, he was disabled, and he was really more on the lower functioning side of the spectrum. It's horrific what they did to him. And I think that his story deserves to be told. So let's get into it. But to judge what is necessary to be told, it is necessary to see and hear all that is to be seen and heard. Before we get any further into this, I want to explain why this one is so personal to me. I have a six-year-old daughter and she's autistic. She's on the lower functioning end of the spectrum and a lot of the behaviors that it's talked about Timothy had, the sensory seeking behaviors, wanting to tear things apart, those are the kind of things that I see with my daughter. What we do in order to help her is we take her to treatment, she's in special classes, she has occupational therapy, she has speech therapy. We do everything we can to help her learn. She's neurodivergent, she needs extra help in order to be able to function and function in a way that's going to give her the best life possible. It fills my heart with such sorrow to know that Timothy needed that and he was not given that. Shonda Vander Ark was born in 1979. I couldn't find much about her childhood out there, but she was either raised religiously or at some point she came across religion and she took it to heart. Um, later on, she goes on to attend Liberty University, which is like a notoriously Christian school, but we'll get there. She married Eric Ferguson, and together they lived in Oklahoma. They ended up having four children together. The first child was a boy, the next child was a boy, the third was a girl, and then the fourth and final child that they had was Timothy. Timothy was born in 2007 and he had autism. He had a uh, sensory processing disorder. He had motor skill impairments and he had speech impairments. And, you know, he ended up actually getting some treatment for that, uh, but it didn't continue as it should have. Later on, Timothy's sister, Millie, actually speaks at the sentencing for Shonda Vander Ark. And she actually talks about how one of her first memories was being taken away by CPS and she was in the car with Timothy. She was very close with him. The outcome of this CPS case was basically Shonda agreeing to leave the home and Eric taking full custody of our all four children. In the court case, you hear the prosecutor talking to her about it and going to confirm she had been restricted to only having supervised visits with her children. She wasn't even supposed to be around her minor children at all. There was a court order in place. After Shonda left her husband, left her children behind, they, you know, they got a divorce and she went on. She should have been a good, productive member of society. I mean, she was, and I hate giving her credit for anything. Trust me, it hurts saying this, but at the same time, I really need to stress how intelligent Shonda Vander Ark was, okay? She went to Liberty University in 2016. In 2016, Shonda earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Paralegal Studies from Liberty University. Shonda then attended Western Michigan University Cooley Law School in 2018 and graduated with all honors. Let me just explain to you. I mean, I've, have you heard about the bar exam and how difficult that is? Yeah, Shonda passed it her first time, okay? She was smart. After attaining her degree, Shonda ended up going and being a clerk of the court for two different justices in the Michigan court system. Now, at some point between Shonda leaving her ex-husband while she's getting her degrees, she ends up finding love again. This man's name is Adam Vander Ark. 
they go off, they, they get married, they actually have a little one together. And, you know, Shonda is just continuing on with life as normal. No contact with the other kids from what it seems like. Uh, and, you know, that was it. Done with them. On to bigger, better things for her, I suppose. In May of 2021, her ex-husband, Eric, actually ended up reaching out to her. Now, Timothy had become too much for Eric to handle. His health was deteriorating from what I could find, and it's a lot. It's a lot to take care of a child that has autism, especially a child that has sensory seeking behavior, which is what they describe Timothy as having throughout the whole case. Timothy was getting services in Oklahoma, at least while he was with his dad. He was going to public school. He had speech and motor skill therapy, like occupational therapy. And, you know, I mean, it was it was hard. Don't get me wrong. And it is difficult. It's difficult to have to do extreme parenting like that. But he was at least being taken care of better with his dad. And when his dad couldn't do it anymore and he had called Shonda, it was more so to let Shonda know that they were ready to institutionalize Timothy. And I really wish that that would have been the outcome. Instead, Shonda decided that she wanted to take on Timothy. For what reason? I have no fucking clue. This lady didn't love him, but we'll get to it. Now, from all accounts, things seemed to be going pretty well uh, shortly after Timothy got there. And Timothy wasn't the only one who showed up. Uh, Paul actually also moved in with Shonda. Paul had a, a difficult relationship with his father. Paul, he, he talks about how he was scared to talk about any feelings with his father. He, he had been forced to pay some kind of rent or something. And his father had given him a deadline on when he had to move out. Now, Paul graduated in 2020. So he was, you know, a very young adult when he's getting all of this pushed on to him by his father. And to be fair, Paul does have ADHD. He has a sensory disorder. So he's, and when he, I mean, when you see the interview with him, you'll understand what I mean. He was very vulnerable and very, very easily manipulated by his mother. Probably part of him, you know, there, there's got to be some maliciousness in there somewhere for him to have done all that he did. But, you know, you can, you can see it that there's a certain point, not only through his testimony, but through like the text messages and everything. You can see that there's a point that he gets to where it just feels like a lot, like too much a lot. And, you know, it took him way too late to figure that out. In January of 2022, Adam ends up having a stroke. And I mean, he was already disabled. Things were already difficult for him. He had more of a difficult time getting around and everything already, but the stroke made things even worse. Adam... For some reason, I, I think it was the stairs in the house was kind of what they said, although still it it feels odd to me. But he ended up moving in with his parents, right? So to recap, what we have right now is we went from having Adam, Shonda, Paul, Gabriel, and Timothy all in the same house. Adam has a stroke. He moves in with his parents. And now we have Shonda, Paul, Timothy, Gabriel, and then Adam and his parents in the other house. They don't live super close to each other, but they don't live that far either from what I could gather. I think it was about 15 minutes because um, Shonda used to actually track her mother-in-law like through the Find My iPhone app, she would track her and make sure that she would get home and make sure that her mother-in-law was not allowed in the house. It's rather unusual the way this, this question was answered by you. She said there was one time that your mother-in-law saw Timothy. Yes, sir. One time. Yes, sir. Just the once. Um, after the stroke, yes, sir. Just once in six months was the only time. 
As far as I remember, yes, sir, that's what I believe. In fact, you went to great lengths to make sure that the grandmother, that's Grammy, that's the person Grammy, you referred yes. to as Grammy, right? Your mother-in-law. You went to great lengths to make sure that she wasn't allowed in your home, didn't you? I mean, that was just because the house was a mess. Did you have some type of tracking device on her to know where she was? Um, she, we had her phone under our, our phone plan, so I could look up on, find my iPhone. Because usually when she was, that way um, Paul wanted to know when she was coming to get Gabriel. Oh, gee, sorry. She says, because the house was messy, but let's be real, we know. Timothy was like that child that gets locked up in the attic in those old shows. You know, where they shackle him down and it's really fucked up and you're just like, really? They're like gentle and sweet and everything. I mean, yeah, I just, I fucking hate this lady. Okay, she's the worst. I'm having a hard time even getting to it because I fucking hate her so much. But let's continue. Not only did Timothy have, you know, the different diagnoses that we discussed earlier, his hearing sensitivity was so bad that... He had a surgery when he was a child to get tubes put in his ears so that he wouldn't have to uh, have a, he wouldn't have to be so vulnerable to how loud the sounds were to him. Timothy also seemed to not fully react when you would think that he should. So there's a story that's told, and I don't I don't know every side of this story but from what it sounds like timothy was younger he had slipped and fallen and bitten through his tongue and he didn't even react the way that you think he would react so it's yeah it's uh it's difficult when you have a child like that but i think with love he could have been in a better place. Timothy was also incontinent. He had to wear diapers. I don't, I don't know what degree this really ended up being just because of the simple fact that Shonda had started like limiting his time in the bathroom. And for somebody who is not fully potty trained, they need a little bit of extra time, you know? Timothy also was on various medications. It's never really made clear what medications he was on when he went to go live with Shonda, but he was on enough to help him, to help him more than what Shonda did. Now, she decided just to let all that lapse. She did not like how he was zombie-like, supposedly, so she decided... We're not going to seek out treatment for him. We're not going to continue his care. He's out of meds and that's it. Oh, well, I know that she is smart enough to know that taking somebody off of meds like that is incredibly dangerous. You should be under the care of a doctor. If you're taking prescriptions, you need to also talk to your doctor about getting off of them. But she didn't do any of that. She never took him to see a doctor. He basically went from living with his dad, getting services, a nice routine. You know, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't perfect there. There's no way it could have been. But then to go from that to the hell that Shonda fucking put him through. And we need to talk about Paul a little bit more. Now, Paul also had like sensory processing disorder, ADHD. But he also, I think, really took it hard when his mom left. OK, whatever happened, his side of the conversation about how things went when he was with his dad was just terrible, you know, and he he talked about how his dad would say that his mother didn't want anything to do with him and she just didn't care, which was true. I'm just saying, let's be real. It was true. She didn't want anything to do with them because if she did, I'm sure she would have worked harder at it, but she didn't. So. She didn't want anything to do with them. But when he finally got to be an adult and his dad was telling him to get out, he was able to get in contact with Shonda and she just tried and pull her sweet magic over him. And she really did the most to manipulate him. She really did. She brainwashed him and tried to make him think that she loved him. But really... 
I don't think she did. Yes, I went to the school back in Oklahoma. I graduated from Santa Fe High School. Okay. I just, I've even got the diploma and I stand in my room. Okay. You graduated from high school. What did you kind of do after that? You just... Um, I think... I know that my father had kicked me out after, like, in, I think, May two years ago or so. So, like, 20, May of 20? So, like, 20? Yeah, and due to COVID, the graduation had been postponed to July, and I had been managed, I had managed to get my bio mom's number at that point, and was capable of talking to her and telling her how all of this had happened. Yeah. And I also asked some of the things that about what dad had told me, the whole, did he, did you really not care? Right. And from what he told, and I'm pretty sure it's scientifically impossible that she had her tubes undone for, for Gabriel, which, from what I'm guessing, that's an impossibility, isn't it? Oh, okay. So I, he's, 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 a a miracle. Miracle. he's a little miracle child. Fair enough. He is a blessing to this world. Yeah. Is your mom feel like that? Certainly. That he's a blessing. Of course, she loves him so much. I think the only child she actually loved out of all of her children was Gabriel. Paul had really just craved her attention. He craved her love. So when she would tell him to do things, he would listen. Paul believed everything she told him about Timothy. And, you know, some of the text messages, it does come off as malicious by him. And I'm sure there were points that he was malicious about Timothy. He was also getting punished when he didn't do exactly what Shonda wanted him to do. So he takes responsibility, though. Shonda still really hasn't. I'm not sure what the first actual event was, but whatever the first real big aggressive event was, things quickly snowballed from there. Throughout the whole case, Shonda keeps talking about this PTSD What she's referring to with it is she's referring to the supposed PTSD she got after Adam had his stroke. Okay, just getting that out in the clear right now. I also want to acknowledge the destructive nature that Timothy displayed because, yeah, it is dangerous behaviors. He was doing things supposedly, and I believe that he, you know, if if he has the diagnoses that they're talking about... If he is doing the sensory seeking behavior, fully possible that he's going around breaking things. I've had to deal with it myself. It's a part of it. That's why it's so difficult and why, you know, it's, it is like extreme parenting because it's just something that most people can't understand unless they have a child that has similar ways of displaying their same disorders. So Timothy, you know, he would peel the paint. He broke his loft bed, supposedly. You know, he he would mess around and take the face plates off of outlet covers, you know, things like that, but things that, you know, maybe require a different way. Redirection seems to help a lot, but I don't think that that was the case here. Shonda decided to go with punishment. Okay. And her punishments were so awful. Her and Paul did terrible things to Timothy. One thing that helped them get away with this is that they had taken Timothy home and they had him homeschool. Now, I'm not sure exactly. Well, let's just say this Shonda doesn't know how to parent. She fucking sucks. Timothy had various punishments. They would chain him while he was sleeping with ankle shackles. They would also tie him up in zip ties in the time between Paul heading off to work and Shonda arriving at home. Timothy was not given food like how he should have been. He had been fed bread with hot sauce and not just any hot sauce. Shonda and Paul went on Amazon and got some of the hottest hot sauce they could find. In Paul's interview with the police, he actually talks about how the hot sauce they had gotten was made with Carolina Reaper peppers. It was 2 million Scoville units. 
this is not appropriate. Not only do I imagine he probably had stomach ulcers of some sort, just the pain from that. He would have hot sauce thrown down his throat. And Shonda, the fucking evil, stupid bitch that she was, even fucking gave the suggestion to Paul to put the hot sauce on Timothy's genitalia. In direction to page 6011. Bottom text. I wonder how it would feel to have that hot sauce on your private parts. I'm not saying touch them there, not at all, but dripping a little bit there is that horrible. Did you have to ask that question? I wouldn't think so. I don't remember that. I can't even imagine saying that. But you did. I know, but I can't even imagine it. About your child, right? Who at that point was in the middle of an ice bath and it lasted at least two and a half hours at that point, right? What, are you asking if I said that? I'm asking you if you said that when your child was in an ice bath for two and a half hours at that point in time, because this is 425 in the afternoon and you're watching on the camera from work and texting with Paul about what he's supposed to be doing with him, with him in the tub, right? I mean, if that's what was, I, I don't remember. I, if that's what it says, I'm not arguing that. I'm not trying to argue that. I'm just saying, I don't know. It just popped in your head today. Yeah, I wonder what hot sauce on your private parts would be like. That. I have no idea where it came from. I no have idea no idea. Did you ever try that hot sauce? No, I don't like food as spicy as Timothy. Mm. Okay. About the hottest I can handle is um, jalapeno cheddar Cheetos. I'm, I'm with you there. I can't handle hot sauce either. So you never even, but administering it as a punishment multiple times, you thought was okay without even trying it yourself first. Yes, sir. I have a very weak stomach, and so I didn't want to throw up. I cannot with this fucking demon okay who does that into their own child and it gets worse food food altogether was the big thing there but timothy also had to suffer ice baths he would get in trouble even for trying to go and get food when shonda's on the stand during her trial she talks about how he had eaten raw ground beef and raw bacon, and then he ate a whole bag of chicken nuggets. And that was what drew the line for her. You said the locks on the refrigerator were there because he got into the refrigerator, and if I heard your testimony correctly, he ate a pound of frozen hamburger? Yes, sir. That was back. And a bag of chicken nuggets? A frozen bag of chicken nuggets, yes, sir. And, and frozen hamburger? Yes, sir. The hamburger was not frozen. It was refrigerated. But frozen chicken nuggets? Frozen chicken nuggets and raw bacon. And raw bacon? Yes, sir. Frozen raw bacon? No, it was in the refrigerator. The, the frozen stuff was the chicken The chicken, chicken nuggets. nuggets, that was the only frozen, yes, sir. Did you think he had an affinity for frozen food? I, I didn't know. The frozen, the only thing he ate frozen was the chicken nuggets. Is that why you sent a text message to Paul while he was in the ice bath at 3.43 that afternoon and said, oh, okay, crazy thought. Tell him if he actually sits up by himself and stays sitting up, he will get some pizza rolls. Don't tell him it's only two, and I'm okay if they are frozen rather than cooked. She had to chain everything up because of the chicken nuggets. Listen, I get it. I get having to lock things away, but keeping it from the child, you know, there's, there's an issue with overindulgence sometimes. And that's, you know, that's something, especially when you have a sensory-seeking child. But this was not that. This was a human starving, not being fed, not receiving nutrients, not getting anything that he needed in one of the most critical stages of life. He was 15 years old. He should have been going through puberty at this point. And the amount of energy that a child needs when they're growing an adolescent needs is just a lot more than what you can get from bread and water and hot sauce. Okay, the ice baths were their own form of punishment and Shonda actually had Paul put a camera in the bathroom so that she could watch him. There were cameras all over the house. Not only were there cameras, there were alarms, there were monitors. Timothy had a camera on him at all times if he didn't have his mother or his brother over him. And even then, there were still cameras. We don't see really any footage 
We don't really see any pictures or anything. I think the judge did a really good job at that because really the only picture that was shared of Timothy was at the end. And, you know, you can see him as he was a little boy that should have been loved. Another punishment that Paul and Shonda had taken, carried out on Timothy was that he had, I'm not even sure what he did. Half the time, they don't even know what he did. And they have all these different punishments that they did to him that they're texting back and forth about. There's like extensive text messages on this one, extensive video, all of that. One of the punishments that they did was having him clean the garage with no pants on. I don't fucking understand that. I don't understand what her reasoning was other than she's a fucking demon. Okay. But none of this is okay. Especially to a child that is as disabled as Timothy was. Now the changes in Timothy, they were noticeable. Shonda tries to play it off in the court that she didn't notice how he's so good at hiding it. And then she talks about how Timothy had chosen to do hunger strikes well, yeah, I'm sure if what you were fed was hot sauce, Carolina Reaper hot sauce, yeah, you wouldn't want to eat either. Timothy had almost starved one time throughout the six months because we're literally talking from January of 2022 through July of 2022. Timothy's decline was very noticeable. It was so bad to the point where Paul actually, a couple of weeks before Timothy passed away, Paul had taken photos of Timothy. I guess he he tells this story about walking in on one of these baths that Timothy was in. And Timothy just laid there, didn't react. Paula said, you doing all right, bro? But you know what? Timothy wasn't reacting. Timothy looked around and he took that as enough that he was fine. In Paul's interview with the detective, he goes on about how... You know, he he had been a little bit concerned. He had brought up the doctor, but he still, in the whole interview, he is trying his best to make it seem like his mom is a nice person. He even says that a few times, like, she's a good person. She's a good person. I hate to let you know, but no, she's not. You know, she had him really messed up in the head. And I really, I have to give kudos to the detective that had interviewed him because he helped him see, no, she was manipulating you. She probably didn't even do half of the positive things that she said she did. Now, Paul had started to try, I guess, toward the end. Only I only say that because it sounds so fucking dumb because fuck that guy too, but also... He's not all there. He doesn't seem like he's all there. And his mom definitely manipulated him and took advantage of him. Remember, she graduated with honors from law school and passed the bar exam on her first try. So she's not dumb. But when you see interviews of Paul, you can see it. Paul did start to really notice, though. He, he also had sent a picture of Timothy's legs that were basically skin and bones to his mother saying, no wonder he can't walk. Now, this whole time, Shonda's also talking about how um, Timothy's faking it, this and that. And they do their best to also, like, protect Gabriel through this whole thing. I don't think that he really saw most of it. It sounds like in their messages and the way that they talk, they talk about how, you know, they got to keep it from Gabriel. And it's so sad because even, even in his interview, Paul is still, still in that mindset of Gabriel deserving all. And I'm not saying he didn't. I'm very glad that Gabriel had a better experience. But that experience should have been able to be shared. Timothy shouldn't have been treated so extremely poorly. It was even after some period of time where they decided that, well... Shonda decided that Timothy was going to actually sleep in the closet that was underneath the stairs. They would lock him in there. They started off with having a bed for him, but he ended up ripping apart, I think, like three of the plastic covers is 
what they were saying. So Shonda and Paul put him on the floor in the little closet with a tarp. Okay. They called it the little room. And that's exactly where Timothy would pass away. He wouldn't only pass away on that tarp alone. Shonda had a camera pointed on him. July 5th to July 6th. That's really what we're talking about here. Now on the video, the detectives were able to actually see what had happened. They saw Shonda dragging Timothy into the little room, the little closet where he slept on the tarp. And they saw her make sure that he was facing that camera. The last words that Timothy would ever hear would be from Shonda. Shonda said, see, dummy, you don't need to open your mouth to breathe. You've seen the video, haven't you? No, sir. I haven't seen any videos. Do you need your, do you need your memory refreshed about him getting back in the small room that night? No, sir. I mean, like I said, I'll take the, I just, I don't remember actually doing it. Did you physically pull him into the room that night? Yes, sir. I mean. And did you set, did you push him down onto the ground so that he was laying and facing the camera? If that's what it shows, then yes, sir. And did you put, position his face towards the camera? If that's what it shows, I. And did you tell him that he owes you the biggest apology on the face of the earth and then maybe he can get out to go to the bathroom? If that's what it shows, sir, I. I don't remember. And did you return a little while later because he had rolled over away from the camera so that you couldn't see him on camera? If that's what it shows. I don't remember any of this. And did you tell him you don't need to open your mouth every time you breathe, dummy, and then hold his mouth shut? I don't know what I said, sir. I mean, I'll take your word for that's what the video is. Oh, you don't have to take my word for it. Let's play the video for you. So it's the next day, July 6th of 2022. This is the day where Shonda supposedly found Timothy on his loft bed. That's not quite the truth. In the body cam footage, you can see her talking and she does this bullshit thing where she tries to cry and act like she's all sad, but she really recovers quickly and she's really trying to pay attention to Paul and what Paul's saying. And she jumps in and she tries to correct some of the things that he says and You know, she does things like denying knowing about the camera in the bathroom and just all around trying to play ignorant. Hmm. Hey, have have you been talking to him at all recently? I talked to him yesterday morning to get him up. Right basically when he started. Okay, so how long ago was that? Did you you know that he was in this hunger strike? I think I did. Hi. Hi. Did I tell you or not? I don't know if I did or not. I don't, I don't think you did. Because he's skin and bone. I know, and I just, how did he? He's, he's really. Well, he, he he doesn't communicate with him hardly at all. Like, they say hi, and they don't, yeah, he's. Are you guys full brothers or half brothers? Well, they're full. The only half is the one that's in there. Okay. We are Yeah doesn't take very long for the police to realize what happened exactly. I mean, they literally, there was no way to not know that Timothy had starved to death. Let me explain this to you. He was five foot nine and 63 pounds. Timothy was in the zero percentile for weight. He was literally skin and bones okay 69 pounds five foot nine it's insane there's no way no way you can tell me that she didn't know now not only that but timothy had been put to bed that night in a diaper or thrown in the little room actually is probably more accurate and he had been wearing a diaper and a sweatshirt shonda ended up hurrying up she had before the police got there She actually had Paul help her get pants on him and move him to the loft bed. Paul talks about uh, trying to resuscitate him and how he thought it could happen, but it was too late. He should have never, ever been in Shonda's possession, ever. Now, this one has been difficult, but let me tell you, 
It is so nice, I think, that Shonda made the choice to go and speak at her trial. Now, first off, she could have at least done the decency to just plead out guilty. I mean, that's what Paul did. Paul ended up pleading out guilty, but Shonda doesn't, okay? So she has a whole court trial. The, the trial actually happened in December of 2023, and it is so nice to watch the prosecutor just rip her apart. She deserves it, okay? If anybody does, she definitely does. Now, she actually, you know, she takes the stand, and again, she tries to feign ignorance. She tries to act like it was all Paul, but we all know better. Paul testifies against Shonda. Paul actually also had pled guilty, and, you know, he he's... I don't know if he's been sentenced yet, but he he actually looks like he feels the guilt. He feels the sorrow. He feels remorse. None of that with Shonda. None of it. In fact, there's this there's this part when they're, you know, like toward the end of her questioning where they show her pictures of Timothy and she she supposedly vomits. I don't believe she did. I don't believe it. This is hours before he dies, right? Yes, sir. You look like that when you put him in the bathtub? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's Do we have a trash can? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, I did. All right. Would you like the jury to remove? Right. Please rise. It was like a huge thing. Everyone's looking at it like, did she vomit or not? No, probably not. She's just a stupid bitch. Okay. So, uh, it took the jury literally one hour to find Shonda guilty. Like, it, it, it makes complete sense, though. There's no way. The mountain of evidence that there was, they had video, they had pictures, they had the text messages, all of it disgusting. The jury convicted Shonda of open murder and first-degree child abuse, for which she has life in prison, exactly what she deserves. Paul, as I said, pled guilty, and his charge was first-degree child abuse. Originally, we were supposed to have his sentencing on January 29th, but that has been postponed. Um, there is one other little thing on this. Shonda also had another court case about a week after her sentencing, and she lost custody of Gabriel. Good. That poor little boy did not deserve to even know her. He deserved way better than that. All these children deserved better than Shonda Vander Ark. And you know, it just blows my mind. She was a clerk of the court at the time. Six months almost she spent torturing Timothy until he died of starvation, malnutrition. And I think that things were actually worse than what we know. Because what we know comes from the text messages from Paul, from those things that we heard. We don't know everything that Shonda actually did to Timothy. Well, uh, if you stayed through this long, thank you so much. Uh, this was a real tough one. I appreciate your support and just be aware, it, it is difficult to parent a child that needs extreme parenting, but it's possible. If you don't feel like you can, there are places, there are resources out there. Reach out to somebody and get some help. Um, until next time, I'll see you again. Thanks. Bye.